I'd like to ask you about uh, what the function of 21st century literature is and uh, does it serve a purpose in our day and age mm. with the ever growing mediums of the internet, graphic novels, and ebooks? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think first of all, I'd say that books are an incredibly resilient medium. That, you know, that all kinds of new media have showed up in the last hundred years that were supposed to spell the death of books, you know, whether it was movies or radio or, uh, you know, television or whatever it was. And books have found their place and have been continued to be useful to people. I mean, clearly, there's, this is a revolutionary moment, you know, in terms of how we can discover things and how we can tell each other things. And I think we're only really at the very beginning of learning what the potential of that medium is, you know, how to tell stories using, I mean, I think, you know, the hyperlink, for instance, allows you the possibility of telling stories sideways, you know, telling alternative stories instead of just linear narratives. And, right. um, and I mean, I'm an admirer of the best of the graphic novels, you know, uh, I mean, Neil Gaiman is a good friend of mine, and I've always lo loved his stuff. And... I don't know Alan Moore, but I admire what he writes, uh, creates, you know, so, Absolutely. I mean, I think clearly any new developments in, in possibility, in technology, and in, you know, will make possible new kinds of work, you know, and I mean, in Japan now, there's this new phenomenon of, of cell phone novels, where you can download novels, you know, a couple of sentences every day over the course of many months, and right. your, your phone tells you a story, <laughs> you know, and so I think we're just at, really at the dawn of knowing what the potential is and how storytelling will develop and change in this age. But I think it will, and that's a good thing. But I think also the old intimacy of just sitting in a room with a book or on a beach or in the bath, you know, or in bed, there's a kind of ease and, and flexibility about books that I think uh, it means they'll be around for quite a while. Do you think, uh, you mentioned authors like Dan Brown, do you think so, so-called authors like Dan Brown, do you, do you think the field is oversaturated and that there are too many writers? Everybody, everybody feels they have the chance to be a writer. Should yeah, people I mean, not be writers? Well, it's always been oversaturated. First of all, that's not new. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do think there is a kind of a problem area which is not so much the Dan Brown. It's not so much to do with Pulp Fiction. It's to do with this kind of phony memoir thing that, that, <laughs> that, that suddenly had people pretending they've got interesting lives when they don't. You know, and... and uh, I, th I can't help thinking of that as a fad that, that will probably just run its course and then something else will come. I mean, there's always been a large section of any bookstore which is full of garbage, you know, and that's fine. Sometimes that's what, you, you know, sometimes you want a burger. You don't want haute cuisine. You know, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be fine dining all the time, you know. So there's a perfectly reasonable place for 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 that kind of escapist, popular beach airport fiction you know and i think that that'll be there but the thing about that is it tends to not endure you know and and each age has its own junk fiction but 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 yesterday's junk fiction no longer survives to today and if you're in the kind of this end of the this end of the business you're trying to write books that will endure you know and then hopefully long time after i'm gone that maybe one or two of these books will still be on bookshelves and and you, so it's a different game slightly, and I think there'll always be a place for that. And, and speaking of pop culture, what was it like working with Bill Maher? If you'd like to do a little plug for your further for future episode. Oh yeah, no, well I mean I must say I enjoyed his show. Actually, the, I first yeah. went on his old show, the show he had on ABC, Politically Incorrect. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And a, a bizarre show where the other guests included Ted Nugent of the NRA, which it was just after the Columbine shootings. Mm. And he was sort of defending the NRA position. And the other guest was Jerry Springer. And so Jerry Springer and I deeply bonded um, <laughs> against, against Ted Nugent. And that's kind of, you know, only in America. You know? <laughs> but I, I, I've always enjoyed Bill Maher's show because I think it's sharp. And at its best, it's, it makes important political points. You know? And I think in the last eight years... Many of us have had reason to be grateful to the comedians, you know, and I think the way in which uh, Bill and uh, John Stewart and Stephen Colbert have, have, in a way, become the conscience of America, you know, and, and, uh, and I think that's to do that through comedy has been a, a real gift, you know, and so, I'm, so I admire them for that.